Hey folks, Chris here. So while I'm kind of hanging out like a lot of people, social distancing and stuff, I realized that I could talk to you about a piece of equipment that I have that's really relevant to being a nomad for a lot of people. And it's my heater. I have a Camco Wave 6 heater and I'm going to talk to you about it tonight and I'm going to show you how it works. And I'm going to tell you why it is that I like it above the Mr. Buddy heaters. Why for me, it's been a really great heater. So I'm back up at the flight park and the flight park is the first place that I came back to when I uh, came back from traveling into Utah here recently. It's just been a great location and it's actually elevated a little bit, just elevation wise. And so it's slightly cooler than down in the valley. And I've even this late in the season, I've continued to use my heater. When I was first researching doing the RV thing, I was looking for a heating source, even though I figured an RV would have a heater. And my old RV does have a heater. But I didn't like using it. It produced kind of sort of um, heat that was had a fumey smell to it. And it was also kind of a propane hog and it was an electricity hog. So it just wasn't something that I wanted to use a lot. And I actually researched a series of different heating options. So you can get diesel heaters, which are supposed to be great, but they're expensive and you have to install them and it's it's kind of a production. Uh, there are the Mr. Betty heaters, which are propane heaters. There are electricity-based heaters. Electricity-based heaters aren't great because they're really energy hogs. It takes a lot of electricity to produce heat. And there were also uh, kerosene heaters. I actually explored the option of kerosene heaters. Kerosene heaters had the benefit of producing a lot of heat uh, and with a cheap fuel source being kerosene, which is readily available. But it had the negative of producing combustion byproducts that weren't very healthy. And But I had spoken with people in van communities and a couple of people who really liked theirs and used them, so I wasn't sure. But I decided after buying a Mr. Buddy heater and trying it and not liking it, I didn't like the smell that it put off. And it also put off a little bit of a sort of a, it was almost like a wet type of heat. I came to find out that burning propane actually as a byproduct produces a certain amount of moisture. And that is something that the Wave 6 heater using its catalytic process doesn't seem to do. So, I invested in, in the Wave 6 heater. I had originally gotten a Wave 3 heater because I wasn't sure how much heat it would produce relative to what I needed in a 26-foot RV. But I came to realize that it wasn't quite enough. So I've still got my Wave 3 heater and I ended up getting a Wave 6 heater, which has been perfect. They also make a Wave 8 heater, which is a larger unit for larger spaces. But the, the Wave 6 in my 26-foot RV has been great. I want to show you how it works. So the way that it works is that it's got a built-in starter right here. And there, there is a, a knob over here that controls starting and the low, medium, and high heats. It says start and then off over here, and you push it in. And you can immediately begin hearing the gas kind of coming out. And you have to wait for seven to 15 seconds about and then once you do that, you come over and you press the starter. You'll either almost immediately get lighting on it, or you'll have to wait for a minute and then suddenly you'll get a burst. You can now see, now that I've turned off light, you can see it glowing. Okay. And then once it started, you kind of move your hand around and you just move it over into the high position. Now, sometimes I found that it just does not seem to want to start by the little starter. I, for some reason, you click it and you click it and you can see a little spark, but it doesn't seem to want to, to take. 
So what I found is that you can actually use one of these things as an ulterior alternative way of starting it. So let me show you. It's, it works pretty well. So you go through the normal process where you have the little uh, button down here. You push in in the off position, off start, and you have to wait for 10 to 15 seconds for enough of the gas to get in here. And luckily this is small enough that it just sort of fits inside of here like that. And then you click it, boom. <laughs> you can see, and then it starts. Now, sometimes it may be kind of tepid, like it'll only, you'll only get flames down here. And I found if I just hold it a couple more times, I can put it back in and click one more time and I'll get a burn at the top, kind of a starting, that starting thing. And then once it's done, you just slowly transition down to either full or half. When you get the instructions, it talks about clearance around the particular sides that you need to have. And I have just found over time and practice the exact space that I need that keeps things safe. I do have a table next to it right here, and the space that I have never creates any kind of excessive heat on the leg or the wood that's near it. I put a ceramic tile that's I think like a foot or maybe 15 inches that I had gotten from Home Depot since it is sitting on a carpet and that ceramic tile absorbs any bit of heat that goes down into the floor. It's not excessive but it protects the carpet. The, the heat primarily comes out frontally from this thing. I mean it's really kind of remarkable how it focuses and there's very little heat that comes out the back. It does come up the top but uh, still, I just, I have found that the space usage of the area that I have right here has worked really well. So it, there is a little bit of a personality to it that you'll, you'll find over time. But once it's started, it goes. And it's consistent, it produces a consistent amount of heat, and it produces a consistent amount of heat pretty quickly. Like it doesn't take long to ramp up. I mean, once it's gotten to the full heat, it's consistent that way through the evening. And it's been, it's been a very consistent heater. And it has worked for me as far low, as far as getting down to like 20 degrees outside. I've lived in the RV when it's been really quite cold outside and it will, it's, that's the, the wave six, it's not going to keep at 70 inside when it's 20 outside, maybe in your RV, but I've got an older RV that's a little drafty, but it has kept it livable. Okay. Uh, so for me, this wave six heater has been a really good heater when it's been really cold. It can take, you know, 15 minutes to get the heat up enough in the RV when I've gotten back from someplace and it's really cold inside. But again, it's just been great. It has not put off wet heat. I guess that propane can with a typical combustion. It does not produce a smell, which is another great thing. That was something that really concerned me is that it would put off a kind of smell like the RV's old furnace did or what I smelled from the Mr. Buddy heaters. It doesn't do that. It's very inert. To me, it smells very inert and the heat that it produces feels a lot like electric heat. It's dry. It's, it's not doing anything apart from putting heat out. So I've really liked it. I think it's a great product. The downsides are some of the f slight fickleness of its starting. But once you kind of learn to work with those, not too big of a deal. So anyway, thanks for watching. I just wanted to go over this to show you why I think this is a great product and why it's worked well for me. And uh, stay tuned. I've got some other stuff coming dealing with living in an RV during a time of sort of, you know, lockdown and, and social distancing and what I've been doing. So anyway, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.